I remember in 2008 standing on the bridge of the Steve Irwin as our helicopter pilot narrated each agonizing minute and second that it took for a minky whale to die on the end of a harpoon. Twenty-two minutes and forty-eight seconds she struggled at the end of that harpoon. What I see every single day in Africa is that suffering replicated thousands and hundreds of thousands of times over on the sharks who are bycatch, on the whales caught in nets, and on the fish that ultimately get thrown into the fish holes. This is where we can make the biggest difference. Let's, uh, let's get the teams ready and let's put the boats in the water as quickly as we can. Because fish populations have been overexploited around Europe, around Southeast Asia, foreign industrial fishing vessels are coming from around the world and congregating in Africa, a place where there still is fish. Around the African continent, we have governments with the political will to stop illegal fishing. What Sea Shepherd has is a long history of experience bringing poachers to accountability. Both of these vessels that we intercepted in the Gabonese border have now been placed under arrest. Each vessel is facing a few different charges. Both of them have been found to be in Gabonese waters, so the previous track shows that they have been in a marine protected areas and they don't have a license to fish, so they have no business to be in there. Without partnering with Sea Shepherd, these governments would struggle to cover the entirety of their waters. Therefore, we provide the ship, we provide the crew to run the vessel, and we provide the fuel. And in exchange, our government partners provide the law enforcement officials that have the authority to board, inspect, and arrest any violators of the law. The Libico 2 is a Spanish-owned fishing vessel. It had been wanted for several years, and the international community was looking everywhere for it. This is a vessel that was part of a 50-ship Spanish-owned fleet operating in the North Atlantic. This Spanish-owned fleet decimated deep-sea shark populations to the extent that deep-sea shark populations fell to 20% of what they were.
The Labica 2 is primarily targeting sharks, and they were targeting sharks for the shark liver oil. It takes an incredible amount of sharks to produce shark liver oil. And so this vessel on a fishing expedition would produce about 50 tons of shark liver oil, which would equate to about 66,000 sharks. That means that this vessel was killing 500,000 deep sea sharks every single year. This vessel had the capacity to wipe out the entire deep sea shark population in, in Liberia. And it had not been for the intervention of the Liberian Coast Guard assisted by Sea Shepherd, it would be deploying these illegal gill nets now. The arrest of the ship is one of the biggest victories that Sea Shepherd has in its entire 40 year history. We've assisted authorities to board and inspect hundreds of vessels. The majority of those vessels have been from China and from the European Union. Sea Shepherd is passionate about our illegal fishing campaigns in Africa because not only are we protecting vulnerable fish populations, defending critical marine environments, but we are also defending the livelihoods of people whose livelihoods are at risk by greedy operators sucking the seas dry. Because there are no fish, no fish around here, so you're forced to go there. But yeah. So you, you've gone further out to get snapper because there's less fish to get yeah, yeah, close. Yeah, fish yeah. to get close. So you're forced to go up there. Yeah. yeah. All the fishermen can swim, huh? Not all. Not all? Yeah, some take rigs. Okay. Because the poverty is too much. Yeah. <laughs> Any mistake, you don't capsize. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm gone. Okay. <laughs> And are the, are the big boats a threat to you out at sea too? Oh yes. Because do they ever run over the boats? Sometimes the boats run over us. They run over the boats. Yes, boat. yes. So then people die, no? Oh, of course. See that somebody run run into me before. It ran into your boat. It ran into my it ran into my kino. What happened it to your kino? Captured me. Yes. I captured. Yeah. Frank, I look, Frank, I look calm. Frank, I look calm and help me to get me out. Well, you would have died. Yeah, of course, I would have died. So the foreign boats, they take all the fish here, so you don't get fish. No. They run over your nets, which is your livelihood. Yes. And they run over your canoes too, and they, they, can, they risk your life. Yeah. Our campaigns in Africa have a greater impact for marine wildlife than any of our other campaigns combined. And the reason for that is the vessels on a daily basis are pulling up thousands upon thousands of fish.
Also, hundreds and thousands of sharks are being killed every single year as bycatch. And the industrial fishing industry is responsible for the deaths of 300,000 whales and dolphins every single year as bycatch. When protecting our oceans, the problems can feel overwhelming, and yet we don't have to save the oceans, we have to save critical areas of the oceans, critical areas of biodiversity. That is what we are doing in Africa. We are drawing our front lines, we are down in the trenches, and we are fighting back. We are taking back the seas from poachers.